Hi guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to control the camera in Blender, how to get cinematic shots and really master the camera with lots of pro tips. Getting a cinematic look in Blender requires careful control of the camera. That means knowing how to change the focal length so you've got wide or telephoto shots, adding depth of field to get that lovely blurry background, adding camera shape to get a natural result and using motion blur. Okay, so I've built this little sci-fi scene here in Blender, which you can see. We've got, um, if I just play the animation, we've got a little robot dude in the middle and then sort of a, a car that's supposed to be like escaping from him. So the first thing we're going to do is add a camera to the scene. Um, to add a camera, it's Shift A and camera. Now the camera always pops up on your 3D cursor, which is not always where you want it. If you press naught, you go to see where your camera's lying. But what I like to do first of all, is to kind of get my bearings um, with the scene. So I know where we are now. Sort of position your camera in the view, just in the viewport display. Then to move the camera to that display, you press Control Alt Zero and that moves the camera to where your viewport is. To fine tune the camera, shift and tilde key, which is under the escape key, then you can move it with your mouse. And you can also control it with W, A, S, D. So it's W to move forward, S to move backwards, A to pan left, D to pan right. And you can also go up and down with Q and E. So you kind of get the, the camera where you want it to be in the viewport. Okay. Once you've got the camera where you want it, you can press press save first because it always crashes when you hit render and press F12 to do a render. Okay, this is our first render. So this camera, the default focal length is 50 millimeters. That's kind of approximately what you get just from human vision. There's two options really from here. If you go make the focal length smaller, you get what's called a wide angle lens. This lets you fit in more of the viewport and if you go the other way, above 50 millimeters, you get what's called a telephoto lens. So kind of common focal lengths would be sort of 35 millimeters, quite a common wide angle lens. Let's just move the camera a little bit. Press zero to view camera mode, select the camera. So wide angle lens is quite good for when you're getting up close. You kind of want to accentuate dimensions. This is a good example of wide angle. It kind of makes the car look bigger at the front, smaller at the back, and kind of accentuates sort of where you are with the car. You feel close to it, and the car dominates the image. The opposite to this is a telephoto lens, and kind of be looking anywhere really over 100 millimeters is telephoto. So let's go to 160. Doesn't matter exactly where you, where you are. So we we'll press zero to go to the camera view, and again we'll control the camera with W, A, S, and D. And what we'll do this time, we'll isolate the robot in shot. Okay. So the telephoto lens is great for isolating details. So if I just render this, so this kind of, you know, sort of helps you show important details or things that are happening that you want to draw the viewer's attention to. Now this could be improved. Um, so at the minute, the robot is sharp and the background is sharp. And what we really want is the robot to be sharp and the background to be a bit blurry to kind of draw the attention to the robot a bit more. So we do this using something called depth of field. So in the camera settings, if you click on depth of field, you'll see it all goes blurry. Now depth of field is controlled with the f-stop. So the lower the f-stop number, the more blurry things will be and the higher the f-stop number, the sharper everything will be. So if you want to kind of isolate something in the viewport, you want to set a kind of fairly low f-stop, you know, anything usually below two would do. And then you also need to choose what you want to focus on. So you can actually do that by clicking on the focus object there. I clicked on that. Let me just show you again. Click on the eyedropper, then click on the object that you want to focus on. And that, let's just render again. Now you can see this time we've got the robot nice and sharp in the background. You can't see the details on the wall anymore. It kind of brings focus onto the robot. 
Okay, let's move on to animating the camera. So what you might want to do in this shot is pan the camera to keep the robot in the frame. So let's show you how to do that. So if you select your camera, and then you click on Object Constraint Properties, and add an object constraint, and we'll use something called Damped Track. And basically you can set your target again, and then you have to click on the track axis that, until you find one that works. In this case it was minus Z. And now the camera will actually track the object in frame all the time to save you having to keyframe that animation. The next thing you might want to do is add multiple cameras. So if we want to, maybe we want to start the animation following the robot up to a frame 100. So what we do, we add markers down here. So we add a marker and we're going to have this first camera, we're going to bind to this marker. So if you kind of click bind camera to marker. So this is the camera. It's the first camera that we see. And then at frame 100, we might want to add another camera. Shift A, add another camera. Okay, let's find a nice dramatic angle. And at frame, let's say frame 100, we'll add another marker. We'll press Control Alt Zero. And this moves camera one. Let's just bind the camera to the marker. So now we'll switch from camera, basically camera one, let's rename them. Camera two. So now we go from camera one to camera two. Let's just set camera two up. So we'll set camera two to be a bit wider, wider angle lens. So now in your animation, we see camera one panning on the robot. Then we switch to camera two to get sort of a wide angle view. And then you can add another camera if you wanted to, to kind of show what happens next. Right, next we're going to delete those cameras. And we're going to show you how to add an empty and track the camera to an empty. I've deleted the cameras and the markers. So what we're going to do next is kind of um, like sort of a car cam. So if you imagine there was a truck in front of the car following the car. So a really great way to control your camera is to use an empty. So we right click on the car. Let's just switch the on screen display back on. So we right click on the car that puts our 3D cursor on the car. Shift A. We'll add a plane axis empty. Okay, you see this empty. And then what we will do, we've got the empty selected, and we click on the car, we do control P, and we'll parent the empty to the car and keep the transform. This means now that the empty, you can see the red line, is actually going to move with the car, it's going to stick on the front of the car. Okay. So an empty, they can be quite confusing for a start. I found them a bit confusing. It's basically like, it's called an empty because you can't see it in the render. But it's kind of like a box and you can attach things inside the empty box and then use the empty to control their scale, their rotation and their position. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a chase cam onto the car. So we'll add a camera. Let's find a nice position for the camera. Shift A, add camera. And we're going to press Control Alt Zero to position it into the viewport. So what I want to do is kind of get a view of the, the car. So the car's in shot, but also so we've got a bit of space to the left of the car so we can see what's behind it. So now we're going to select with the camera selected. We're then going to click on the empty and we're going to parent the camera to the empty. So now, the empty is parented to the car, so that means the empty is stuck on the car, and the camera is parented to the empty. So you kind of get this stuck on the car feeling, which can be really useful. But that doesn't end there. 
So because the camera is parented to the empty, when you select the empty, I'm going to press R to rotate. You can literally rotate. Let's just rotate on the Z as well. You can literally rotate on the Z axis by pressing R and Z. You can actually have the camera pan around the empty as the car is moving. So what you could do, if we go back to the start, we'll have the empty in that position to start with. So press I for rotation. And then as the car moves around the corner, I'm going to press R and Z whoops, to pan around the car. I'm going to press I again to lock the rotation. So what happens is you actually pan around the car. So we'll have it pan around the corner a bit there and then we'll R, Z and we can actually pan around the back of the car. Press I for free keyframe and rotation again. So now as the animation plays the camera pans around the front of the car, pans around the side of the car and then to the back of the car. And rotation is not the only thing you can control with the empty, you can also control the scale. So if this keyframe, let's put a keyframe in here for scale, I scale, and then we move to this point here and we'll scale the empty by pressing S and make the empty bigger and then press I to scale again. We've actually controlled the scale of the zoom on the car. So now we can actually zoom out of the car to pan behind it. And the final thing you might want to do on this shot is add some camera shake. So camera shake is basically when the action is happening so fast, the camera operator can't hold the camera steady and it adds kind of a shake to the image, which kind of adds excitement and drama. So to add camera shake, we're going to open up the empty, select the camera, and we're gonna press I and add a rotation keyframe. And then we're gonna to go to the animation window, and I'm gonna open up the graph editor. And what we're going to do Let's add some noise. Let's just get, put this to, so you can see the camera view at the top there. So I'm going to click on the X rotation and we're going to add a modifier and that's gonna be noise. So this is gonna make the camera jiggle up and down. Obviously that's way too much. So what we're going to do is gonna increase the scale this basically slows it down and we're also going to decrease the strength so we just get a tiny bit of camera wobble so now if we play this back we just get a little bit of wobble up and down on the x-axis you might also want to add some extra wobble select the Z rotation add noise and again repeat the process scale it out a bit so it's not too much. We don't want anyone being sick. We decrease the strength again to 0.1. So now we kind of get this nice feeling as though we're chasing something that's going really fast. And the final thing you might want to add is motion blur. So if we click on the camera settings, the top, and then we click down and select motion blur. And basically what this does, anything that's moving in the frame gets blurred. So let's just do a render of this particular frame here. So you can see on this render now, the road, it's kind of got these nice little streaks on, you've got some streaks in the background. The car is sharp because the, the camera is parented to the car. So the camera is moving at the same speed as the car. So that is sharp. But you can also see we've got motion blur now on the wheels and just a little touch at the back of the car it really gives a sense of drama and speed. Plus obviously the camera shape will add a little bit of blur as well. Okay, so I've just set up a quick animation with all three cameras. 
So we've got the first is the close-up telephoto camera. Then we swap to a wide angle camera to show a bit more action. Then we swap to an on-car camera with some motion shake. So I'm just about to render this animation so you can see it. But just a quick note, um, all the cars in this animation are from the traffic uh, add-on by Polygon Eek. It's a really great add-on for adding all sorts of cars. You can choose lots of different types of cars. And the cars are already pre-rigged. So all you need to do is drop them on the scene, add a path, hit animate, and it rigs all the wheels moving, the steering wheel turning, the suspension, everything. It's very, very good, very quick. Uh, the second add-on I'm using is um, K-Cycles X. Uh, this is fantastic uh, for rendering with cycles. It's much, much quicker than uh, regular cycles. It's about twice as fast. And that's not the only cool thing. The other cool thing is it's got these uh, post effects built into it. So you can very quickly add bloom, just like you can in Eevee. Uh, you can also add some flares. So I've got a nice anamorphic flare going on, which you can see if you look at the, the lights, you've just got that kind of cinematic flare that goes across the goes across the frame. It just looks really cinematic and great. It gets great results pretty much straight out of the box. Right, let's render the animation. Thanks again for watching guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. If you use some of the tips from the video, please ensure that you drop them in the comments below and let me have a look to see what you've done. Really makes my day to see you using the tips and see how you're getting on. Like and subscribe for more. I've got a very exciting tutorial coming soon about Halloween. So stay tuned for that. Okay, see you on the next one.